Hi. Hey, Dana, how you doing? I'm doing great. I am excited to speak to you. This is, it is five minutes, but it is one of the most impactful short animation films I think I have seen in recent memory. Oh, nice. Thank you. Yeah. It is, it is absolutely beyond beautiful. It touches all scopes of the African-American aspect from family to bonding to the hair struggles to just an amazing right. story with a you know a father daughter bond. Can you please just talk a little bit about the creation of this short? Well, uh, you know, originally it it kind of stirred around in uh, Matthew's chair, Matthew Cherry's head. You know, he mm -hmm. had this uh, uh, this sort of great idea about a father daughter um, book. Basically, is where it started from. Right. And, uh, and it's just a simple, very simple illustrated book, but man, I mean, it really sort of touched down in terms of um, uh, just what in our community, in terms of how we how we relate to our kids. You know, it's like a father-daughter relationship can be very different from a uh, father-son relationship. And dealing with the hair is a thing, you know, it's like I have a daughter and, and like, you know, I could never figure out her hair as a child. So, mm -hmm. So yeah, it certainly uh, touched base right there, and I think um, once once Matthew really sort of came up with the with the nice um, uh, the kids book, it just seemed like a natural progression to go to the next phase. And let's see if we can make this into an animated short. I'm sure that's how that question kind of came up. Now, can you so tell me? Oh, yeah. uh, I, so once he he then sort of had the Kickstarter, and I think it just simply. The, just the general, the illustrations, the charm and all the illustrations uh, just kind of led to everybody really understanding what it actually could be. Right. Now, even though it's five minutes, it says a lot and it tells a lot of a huge story. Can you tell me about what was it like to try to get everything to make it a full story, but only within that five minutes? Was it hard or was it easier to do because of that kind of time strain? No, none of this is easy. <laughs> it's, you know, it's like uh, the first uh, cut was very fat. So, you know, to get it to get it down to to the essence of, of, of we thought what would be the best story to tell. I mean, we cut a lot of stuff. There's a lot of stuff on the editing room floor. Uh, that was really fun also, but we were really trying to really cut to the core of, of what this relationship meant and, and what it means. So a lot of stuff that a lot of people like, you know, didn't make the cut. And, uh, you know, when you sit with it for such a long time, you know, that, that's what this process is. It's, it's a lot of, uh, you know, second guessing and you go with your gut on some things. And um, there were sequences that we were changing literally up to like maybe three weeks before we were finished. Like literally, okay, pull this out, put this in. Like, so uh, it's, it, animation is, it can be a very sort of painstaking process, but when, you know, but when it strikes a chord, it's really rewarding. Right. Now, can you talk a little bit about with the voice casting? It is mainly Issa Rae's voice that we hear, and it's very important that we kind of that that character has a voice. Can you talk? Tell a little bit why the other characters don't exactly speak. We know what's going on, but they don't really speak. Was how was that decision decision made? Well, you know, early on, it's animation always plays best when you you try to minimize the dialogue anyway. I mean, animation is sort of a, a, a medium that was built, you know, on pantomime mm -hmm. and acting it and really trying to pull emotion with the least amount of dialogue as possible. Like, you can go all the way back to, like, you know, the 20s when this medium kind of really sort of to surface and a lot of the stories were told without dialogue, you know. Right. Um, and so, really, that, that theory and... And, and from an animation standpoint, it's always great to communicate with strong acting and figuring out how to communicate ideas without, you know, the luxury of dialogue. I think it was a creative choice to just simply have the dialogue come from the mom's point of view, which worked best, you know, because you've got now this just this general um, uh, relationship that relies truly on emotion and acting between the father and the daughter, which I think really helps simplify and streamline the idea. Okay. Now, also, I was wondering, the hair itself is a character. 
And I think that was beautifully done and, and wonderfully shown off. What was the process behind creating the, doing the hair as a character? Was that something that you felt was important from the very beginning? Or was it something that was yeah, later think, added on? I think that that was always incorporated. Like the idea of the hair kind of coming alive was part of, you know, uh, in the initial story could. It's just a matter of like when the hair comes alive. It's how you layer out the certain, you know, portions of information uh, that keeps it very entertaining and keeps you sort of surprised. Um, you know, and then when we turned the hair alive, we wanted to make sure that you knew it was sort of, we, we did some visual cues that let you know that, okay, this, this hair is really alive. We handled it different visually. We had some effects on it. Um, and, you know, there's some sound effects and everything that really kind of helped drive home the gas and stuff, too. So, uh, uh, you know, so I, hey, listen, when my daughter was a kid, I felt like her hair was coming alive, too, at times. <laughs> now, you've been involved in a lot of animated films. Could you talk a little bit about the animation itself, the process behind it? Uh, what kind of thought process goes into creating that particular style of art? Well, you know, it's like animation has really sort of blossomed over the past, you know, 20 years, I would say, with sort of the, with all the digital tools and everything that takes place mm -hmm. th that allows us to sort of like dive into what we call sort of hand-drawn animation. This is sort of traditional in a sense. I would all, I would probably call this sort maybe more tradigital. That's a word. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, uh, it has the hand-drawn feel, but it's all digital. Oh, but animation morphs and, and, and continues to, uh, you know, it's like I've been in this business for a long time and I've seen it morph into many different patterns. But I think really when you, you cut through to, to the essence of this medium, it's really about, you know, telling stories that, that connect to, to a wide audience. However, and whichever medium, whichever style of the medium that you, that you use to sort of um, uh, communicate that, I think that the choice for this to be uh, hand-drawn was the best choice because it, it really related and, and really stuck to the core, the visual style of the book. And I think that that's what the most important thing was. We wanted both to have, have the same identity and uh, and then just, just wanted to really sort of, it's really tough to make characters, you know, uh, uh, resonate and pop off the screen. And we don't, you know, in terms of just African-American characters, there's not much history of that that's really kind, you know, and I think that where this me, where this short works best is that you've got real genuine characters here that don't fall into like a stereotype or anything like that. I mean, these are real genuine characters that you look at the short and you're like, I know this little girl, you know, I know this dad, you know, and I think that that's, if you look at a, a lot of the response online and in articles, people really feel these characters, you know what I mean? It's like they really know who these characters are and that's when you know that you've really connected and that's when this medium works best when you see characters on the screen that you can actually empathize with and 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 then that takes you, that, that ropes you in and you want to be involved in the story. And also I was kind of wondering with, kind of with the ending, how it's more like an expression of bonding with the family. It's not so much, I feel that hair love is not so much about hair, but the time that we spend with each other. Um, and the ending, I felt, was the most impactful with the mother. Can you talk a little bit about the decision with the mother at the end, how that came about and in the inclusion of that? Well, I think that was always Matthew's story. Uh -huh. um, you know, Ma Matthew really wanted that the, the twist to really sort of drive it home. It's, 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 what's great about this short is six minutes of really fun surprises. And certainly while care is at the center of it, there's an emotional core that ties everything together in a really nice way. I mean, you go through a lot of emotions in a very short period of time. You know, you laugh, you kind of engage, and you... And, and you embrace these characters, and then you cry in the end. So, like, it's, it's a perfectly sewn-together story. And, and, you know, Matthew really was a genius and a wizard at really pulling all those things together. You know, uh, when I came on, I saw, I saw the short and, and uh, just saw the bones of the story, and we just all jumped in and really tried to trust and drive home all the great emotional elements that, that uh, Matthew had idealized. And... Um, you know, I had a, a great time, and it was an emotional time putting this together, too. So, mm -hmm. so, yeah, a lot of the ideas really resonate, you know. But 
everyone deals with certain things in their family, certain illnesses and such. And, and Matthew really sort of tastefully wrapped this up with these characters and how it resonates with the mom really well. And also, I was wondering, like the, the the short itself is highly funded. Like you guys set a goal of seventy five thousand, it ended up with three hundred thousand. You ended up having a collaboration with Sony Pictures Animation. Do you feel that in the future, this story could probably be extended into maybe a series or maybe a, a feature film? I think that would be fantastic. I mean, I think certainly you know these characters can continue to live in whichever style of the medium that that uh, that could be chosen. I mean, certainly you can make a feature film, a TV series could adapt also, uh, but really it's kind of, for us, it's, it's the beginnings of, of a lot of stuff. It's the beginnings of showing uh, characters on screen that you aren't used to seeing on screen, you know, and, uh, from an animation standpoint. And uh, and it's, it's an odd thing in my business, in this business, because, you know, you, you rarely see characters of color, you know, um, and, and carrying the body of, of a film in any way. You know, Sony's been great with that when you think about, you know, the uh, Spider-Verse and how real those characters felt uh, throughout the film. And then you get, you know, a whole sort of, you play the spectrum when you look at um, something like Air Love and you kind of see the spectrum of characters. It's like one, thing that, one of the things that, that really cracked me up in our medium is that normally in a film, in an animated film, you kind of get that one African-American character sometimes, if you're lucky, right, right. right? And that one character has to carry the diaspora of everything that we right? Yes. And you're going to fail. You're going to fail all the time if you just got one character that has to represent, you know, uh, just this one monolithic idea of what it is to, you know, African-American. The African-American experience can't be wrapped up in one character. Mm -hmm. So so when you look in, at a movie like Spider-Verse and what we've done with uh, Hair Love, you've got, you know, a plethora of characters that really help now kind of break down the black experience a bit better, you know, and I think that um, what this this film, is, to me, is like like with you, you tie it together with, with Spider-Verse, Spider -Verse, and these are like sort of footsteps into a place where let's introduce some new characters that really help guide your stories now, you know, mm -hmm. um, and uh, and hopefully, uh, hopefully this is a, this this these characters are the beginnings of something that could be fantastic for me as a whole. Right. And lastly, I was wondering, what can we look forward to in the future with you? Uh, with me? Yes. Any projects? Um, I, I, I think, you know, one of the reasons why, you know, I, I jumped at the opportunity to be on the short is because I've always been trying to uh, to really drive, uh, you know, the, the African-American characters in this medium. I've been doing this medium for so long and worked on so many different projects where I felt like, you know, Wow, my voice is missing in a lot of this. You know, I, 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 I am a technician, I guess, when it comes to being, you know, doing the animation and stuff like that. And, and I love this medium. And I feel like I've been doing it long enough now where I feel like, you know, I want to really be in the forefront of pushing African American characters on screen, represent it the way they should be. And now we're in a space now in 2019 where it's all about representation and inclusion and uh, diversity and as much as everyone talks about it, it, it now we're doing it. Right. it makes a big difference so you know look for me to really sort of continue to be in the forefront of, of really pushing african-american characters on the screen i mean you know there, there have been talk about you know the, the idea of, of revisiting a show that i created called the crowd family which yeah. you know kind of created the spectrum of, of african-american characters and and family and stuff like that and, and uh so we'll see what happens i just want to say i love the proud family oh my goodness and it's still what i love is that it's still on and it's still relevant today and i just yeah I, even more so yes yes thanks I, I you know listen we we had a lot of fun crafting that show and and it was a lot of really great african-american talent that 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 sort of came together at the right time to kind of give voice to that show and and i think the more opportunities we have to do that i think uh we'll be able to see ourselves on screen a whole lot more. Can you say anything about the the extra episodes, the upcoming episodes, or maybe a release date, a year, anything? <laughs> I can say absolutely nothing about that. And <laughs> <laughs> uh, I would love to speak, but I, I can't say anything right now. Okay, okay. But the future's bright. That's all I know. The future's bright. Well, that's good. That's good for me to know. And also, just a little suggestion, 
please bring back grandma's, uh, the, the wannabe, the boyfriend. The guy who keeps running away, who kind of has the laugh like the oh, Joker. Oh, Poppy. yes. Please bring back Poppy. If you do do it. If he could just have, like, one whole episode, just all in Spanish, him talking about grandma yes, all the I'm time. Oh, Poppy episode. That's such a great idea. Okay? Yeah, <laughs> please. Keep that close. He okay. needs a spinoff. He's just hilarious. <laughs> Thanks so much, man. We have fun crafting that character. That character had two voices, by the way. Oh. People don't really know that. Yeah, so that character had one voice. You know, he had the very smooth, poppy delivery. Yes. And then we had a whole other voice. Whole other entirely for the laugh. What was the intention behind the like? How did the laugh come about to have a whole separate voice for that? <laughs> we were, we were. I can't remember this right. Uh, when we were crafting the idea of the character, we thought it would be funny for him to, so you know, have the charm of Cesar Romero, right? Uh huh. Well, Cesar Romero was like the original Joker on the original Batman show, and so we just kept peeling that artichoke back. So when we dressed him like the Joker, we, we you know, gave him the hairstyle of the Joker and then just gave him the laugh, you know, also. And uh, just, just kind of kept being silly with it. Oh, God. So it made sense. <laughs> it does. It, I love it so much. If you ever do a short, anything, please involve him as well. Oh, it's, it's great. Poppy has a fan club. I'm sure he would love to know that. That's great. Absolutely. <laughs> And even like how he chooses his style, his just dress style is just, it's sharp, but still whimsical. That's right, you know, it's like straight zoot suit. Poppy went straight zoot suit. <laughs> so, uh, yes, yeah, you're right about that. That's funny. That is so funny you say that. <laughs> so thank you very much. I love the film. I love any future projects you have coming up. I look forward to it. I love the representation that you do in all of your projects. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you for that. I appreciate that very much. Thank you.